Hi guys! So today, real quick, I'm going to tell you about the books that I've been reading recently. I have quite a few books to talk about, so we'll try to make this, uh, to make this as quick as possible. So the first book I read is La Condition Humaine, written by André Malraux. Malraux. <clears throat> Um, so the book is not really pretty, but I like to buy second-hand books, so that's why. Um, I read this book while I was in Japan, and I think it says quite a lot about the book, because when you're traveling and you manage to finish a book, it means it's a pretty good book, and that was the case for this book. I had been wanting to read this book for a very, very, very long time, uh, without any real reason. I didn't even really know what it was about that much, but I just felt like this would be a great read, and I was right about that, because the book is really interesting. I think it's a different kind of story. It focuses a lot on politics, obviously. That's the main focus and the main interest, the main topic of this book. Um, that's really, I don't know, it makes you think a lot about your own capacity to um, be brave and courageous and, you know, kind of rebel yourself against power and stuff like that. And it's very human. It's like, oof, all the emotions are very raw and intense. And, and the writing style is pretty amazing. I was really, really surprised because I wasn't expecting it to be super beautifully written. It's a classic. It is a classic, but it's not a very well-known classic. And if you're interested in French literature and want to read something that's a bit more, uh, kind of, uh, not as well known as other classics. I would definitely recommend that one. This has to be one of my favorite books of all time, I think. Um, I didn't know Klausmann. I knew his father, obviously, but I didn't know him and I didn't even know that Thomas Mann had a son and that this son was a writer as well, so I'm sorry uh, for that, Klaus. But I just picked up, picked up this book very randomly. I was, I think, with my sister and it was... Um, a second-hand book as well. It was really cheap and I was like, okay, let's take that. I'm not really keen on autobiography most of the time, but lately I've been kind of liking them. I don't know why. It just tells the story of this, of the life of this young man who happens to be German and who is faced with um, the all the changes that happened in Germany when Hitler and the Nazi um, took the power. And it's very interesting from a very literary perspective because you can read about many other authors that, you know, you never really get to read about them in a personal way. You always read what they have written themselves or stuff like that. So it was really interesting to see them in a different light. But it's also very interesting from an historical and kind of political perspective to see how people reacted and how countries reacted. Uh, along it took to everyone to realize that was what happened that was what offered, that what was happening was serious. And it's also very beautiful from a very personal kind of intimate perspective because you have a great access to the feelings of the author without it being kind of too pathetic or a bit of a voyeur, voyeur way, I don't know. So that was uh, really, really, really a great book. And it took me a long time to finish it, not only because it's a big book, but because I wanted to make glass. Then I read this one by Dostoevsky and it's called Les Nuits Blanches or probably something like The White Knights I would suppose in English. I think it's a short story and yeah it was great. I liked it a lot actually. Um, Dostoevsky might be a little bit uh, intimidating at first but, um, so it's a good idea I think to start with um, novellas or short stories and this one is really interesting because you can really meet the style and the universe of Dostoevsky. I think it's a very a subtle yet witty and uh, kind of sarcastic or a bit mm, bitter um, universe in my opinion at least that's how I would see it. You're so into the story that even though the ending is kind of obvious you would never see it coming. Then I read um, this one which is the history of surrealism so I said it in a previous video surrealism has to be my favorite probably movement and um, this one is not, obviously it's a non-fiction book, it's just about surrealism, so it's not really interesting if you're not into literature and into this particular movement, but if you are, it was, it's a really interesting read, uh, because it focuses on the artistic, even though the surrealist would not be really pleased with me using that word, but it focuses on the artistic side of it and also the political side of it and everything else around it. Then I read this one by Michel Warshavsky, and it's called Programmer le désastre, la politique israélienne à l'oeuvre. So I don't think this is available in English. It might be though, but I'm not quite sure uh, what it says. It's basically planning the disaster and Israeli politics uh, in action.
action, I suppose. And it focuses on, well, the title says it all. It focuses on the Israeli politics when it comes to Palestine. And it just shows how cruel, barbaric, inhuman, uh, illegal, and acceptable it is. I, I would suggest recommending that. I would suggest reading that book. And I would suggest more than anything, uh, you know, educating yourself on this subject because it's important we're turning a blind eye to something that's happening right now that's been happening for years and that's cruel and disastrous and terrible and that should not be ignored. And then uh, I read this one, La Conscience de Zeno, which is an Italian book, so the title is La Conscienza di Zeno, I suppose, something like that. So, I didn't like that book very much, to be honest. Um, actually, I was supposed to have a class and this book was supposed to be studied in that class, but I finally ended up taking another class. So I just bought this book in advance and felt like, okay, let's read it anyway. Um, and I was like, that's great because I don't really read Italian literature. I don't think I've ever, I mean, I have probably read a few books before, but you know, very, very, very small amount. So I was excited and kind of disappointed. I didn't like it very much. I didn't like the subject. I find it very, not boring, but not interesting. I mean, there's a difference between the two, in my opinion. And it just, just, there was nothing in this book that kept me wanting to read it. And the style was not really, there was nothing special, in my opinion, about the style. And if you have any recommendation for Italian literature, please feel free to let me know. So that was a pretty long video. I hope you enjoyed watching this, guys. Let me know what you've been reading recently, because I would love to get more suggestion and inspiration from you guys. And I will see you later. Bye!